Hello everybody and welcome to the Elements of DAX video training series. In this first video we're going to do a brief introduction to the framework. My name is Brian Grant. I'm here with CSG Pro and without further ado let's go ahead and get started. So you want to learn DAX do you? Uh, when you go to learn DAX it, it's a bit intimidating. Uh, the learning curve is interesting shall we say. So uh, when you're just starting out right and you're kind of trying to see up all the way to the tip top of the mountain uh, what you will see, or maybe you won't even see it, is at the very beginning, things look very, very difficult. When you start learning DAX, it's immediately quite tricky. However, however, uh, the makers of the DAX language were very smart, and they said to themselves, you know what? Um, this language is supposed to be self-service, which means that non-programmer type people are supposed to be able to, uh, if not learn it, at least use it. And so what they did... Uh, is in the language, uh, at the very, very beginning here, where things actually would normally be the hardest, uh, they actually provided some shortcut functions and some shortcut syntax. And if you use those, um, it's essentially going to let you skip learning some really hard concepts at the very beginning. Now, if you don't need those hard concepts, that's great. You kind of hop in the little helicopter, it takes you up this little cliff face. And then for a long, long time, right, you can use those shortcut functions and syntax to accomplish all kinds of fairly simple things. Stuff I might call casual DAX, which, by the way, there's absolutely nothing wrong uh, with being sort of a casual DAX user, right? Uh, this is the kind of person w wherein uh, you don't write DAX all that often, maybe every couple weeks or something like that. And you don't really need to know completely how it works. You can just copy and paste stuff off, uh, you know, some blog that you found and as long as you tend to get the right answer most of the time that's just fine right so there's nothing wrong with this however right as you sort of march up the mountain here uh, at some point if you want to go do some trickier stuff you run into some problems right as long as you're standing down here everything's fine but as soon as you hit a point right about here right because you skipped learning those hard concepts and you use these shortcut functions and the shortcut syntax You've been spending this entire time uh, calcifying in your mind a way that the language works that is incorrect. So you're building all kinds of assumptions about how to use the language, which are all wrong, right? And so now, uh, when you try to go to learn this stuff, right, you have to simultaneously unlearn this stuff, learn this stuff, and also try and learn this stuff, which makes it incredibly difficult to do, right? So this area up here is very, very hard if you skip this stuff at the very beginning. And guess what? Almost everybody skips this stuff at the very beginning, right? So in this zone, uh, what you will find is when you get to it, because you've got all these false assumptions, it's going to seem like nothing works and that everything is confusing, right? So uh, the idea... Uh, the idea with the elements of DAX, the thing that we're building, is what we wanted to do is we wanted to find a way to teach these hard concepts at the very beginning, right? Because pretty much everybody I know always skips this stuff, and they always pay for it over here. So we said, hey, I bet if we could find a way to teach this tricky stuff at the very beginning, it'll make the rest of the language a whole lot easier to learn, right? And we think we've done that. We think we've done that. So uh, before I get to that, though, I want to take a second and just sort of... Uh, uh, it's just sort of be a bit more, not introspective, but look into uh, what is this helicopter? What are these shortcut functions and syntax of which I'm talking about that mess things up when you get a little bit further through the language, right? Well, uh, these all correspond to what I might call writing DAX in a shortened form. And, and the thing about writing DAX in a shortened form is there's nothing wrong with it once you understand how the language works. However, until you do, writing in a shortened form is going to hide the very ideas you need to be learning. Let's make that a bit more concrete, right? So we've got uh, sort of a shortened form where it's very easy to see the intentions, right? It's very easy when you're getting started and it's also easy to see what you're trying to do. But in the long form, it's gonna be easy to see the mechanics. Again, let's make this more concrete. Here's some examples of this, right? The first example is what we might call uh, DAX contractions or also syntactic sugar, right? These are just shortcut ways of writing longer code, right? So here I've got this measure right here. And I know you're new to DAX, but you can at least kind of glance at it and kind of see what it's trying to do. Okay, I guess it's trying to take the sum of the sale amount column and it looks like it's doing sort of a, a sum ifs thing where the category equals food. Yeah, I kind of get it. This is sales for food. Yeah, so if you write DAX in this short form, it's fairly easy, easy-ish at least, to see what it's trying to do. However, this is a shortened form. This could be rewritten uh, in long form and this section right here will look like that and this section right here will look like that. Now, the downside of the long form, right, is it's a lot harder to understand what the heck it's trying to do. However, right, you can already see even here with just these two little snippets that there are some simple patterns that seem to repeat themselves. This bit looks a lot like this bit. I don't understand them yet, 
but I kind of see the pattern where there's like four lines and that second line is always dark brown. I don't quite get why, but I can start to see the patterns, right? So uh, there's more than this, right? There's more than just contractions. There's also abstractions, right? Abstractions are ways of uh, taking low-level code and conveniently packaging it up. That's not like a textbook definition of abstraction, but it's gonna work for us right now. So for example, right? If we have a measure, uh, which is maybe the, the closing balance, right? Uh, we might write something that looks like this, right? Where we use uh, a measure to say, hey, you know, I could write out this big, long string of code right here that, that corresponds to the business idea of total sales. But why do that when I could just define a measure and then refer to the measure right here, right? And then rather than writing out this big, long string of code that produces uh, the last date in the time period, I'll just use this function, last date. So in this format right here, it's a lot easier to see what we're trying to do. We're trying to calculate total sales for the last date. Okay, I get that. However, right, that comes at a cost. Even though it's easier to see what we're trying to do, it's a lot harder to see the full written out version. And once you look at the written out version, what you start to see is when you write the thing all the way out, those patterns become very, very apparent, right? There's a whole bunch of simple repeating patterns. This thing right here, you can kind of see it there, you can kind of see it there, you can kind of see it there, and you can kind of see it there. You don't know how to interpret it yet, but you can immediately start to see it. It just seems to be the same simple patterns over and over again. And it is. It absolutely is. Okay, so uh, this is all easier said than done, right? The problem with both uh, learning long-form decks and uh, teaching long-form decks is that it's really, really hard, which is why most classes including all of my old classes, don't do it, right? I don't even know if it's been done up until this point. It probably has, but it's been very, very difficult, right? So the idea is we invented this uh, Elements of DAX framework is what we're calling it, uh, which is sort of a collection of terms and ideas and, and working together, they're designed to make learning DAX in its long form not only possible, but possibly even easy, okay? So what do we mean by this? The Elements of DAX framework. The idea here is that to write DAX at an intermediate level, not an advanced level, but at an intermediate level, right? You only need to master, you only need to understand three elements, which are families of functions and references. These are sort of like DAX's parts of speech and seven patterns. These are just common arrangements of those elements. If you learn those basic things, you will be able to write DAX at an intermediate level and also, and also understand what's happening, right? So let's look at each one of these, the elements. This is sort of the most important part as far as I'm concerned, right? Some folks like the patterns starting off, but I think the elements are even more important. Not think, I, I'm almost certain that they are. Uh, all right, enough talk about that. What do I mean by these elements, right? Well, okay, so let's start by thinking about um, sentences in English, right? So if you think of sentences in English, they're made up primarily of nouns, verbs, and adjectives. These are the parts of speech in grammar. So in the same way that I've got two sentences here, trees are green and Trisha grew tall, even though these are different sentences, they are composed of the same parts of speech. We've got nouns, we've got verbs, and we've got adjectives. And even though trees and Trisha, those are two different things, they're not literally the same thing, they're both nouns. They both do the same job in the sentence, right? They refer to the person, place, or thing. Similarly, a DAX expression is made up of filter revisers, table derivations, and iterators. These are the elements of DAX, the elements of a DAX expression. So if I have two measures, total sales and max customer age, right? Even though the instructions themselves are different, right? The form of them are the same. They are both made up of filter advisors, table derivations, and iterators. And the two different measures, even though uh, sales and values, customer age are two different things, they're both table derivations. So they both do the same job in each one of these measures. Right? Okay. So the patterns are common arrangements of those elements, right? Because the elements tend to get used uh, and arranged in the same way over and over and over again, uh, we said, well, let's call these uh, common arrangements patterns, right? So for example, right, down here I've got three measures, Oregon sales, average beverage return, and December transaction. And even though these are three completely different measures that uh, do completely different things, and by that I mean they return completely different uh, answers to completely different business questions, the structure of them is uh, the same right? They all have the same structure, the same way of combining filter revisors, table derivations, and iterators. You don't know what they are yet, but you can kind of see the pattern right here. It just sort of jumps out at you. They have the same internal structure. This is an example, or I should say these are examples of the static override pattern, which is just one of seven patterns that we're going to look at, seven common ways of arranging those elements, right? 
And the thing is, if you learn these patterns, uh, they are uh, going to help you solve a lot of business problems. That's pretty important. But maybe even more importantly, they're going to help you get a feel for how you could use the elements and how you could have them interact to solve more difficult problems. That's the real function. Okay. So uh, these elements, uh, what are they? Pretty simple. There's only three of them. First element, filter revisors. They change the filters. They add or remove filter tables. They just change what filters are in place. Second element, table derivations. They create temp tables based on the filters, right? And then thirdly is iterators. They process temp tables into new numbers or even new temp tables. And that's it, right? So the examples of these that we're going to use, right, the, the most common examples of these, the ones that we're going to use in the class, are written down here. This is what you would actually type out in your code, right? And with these uh, 12 things, these 12 combinations of functions and references, we're going to be able to write all kinds of intermediate DAC with just these 12. No additional stuff necessary, okay? So the idea here is that even if you've got a very complex recipe or very complex measure, uh, everything is made of just three ingredients or just three elements, right? So even complex formulas are built from just the three elements. So this one over here, even though it looks big and looks really super duper gnarly, and it is, uh, it can be broken down to just three elements being used over and over and over again, right? The filter revisors that add or remove filters, the table derivations that create temp tables, and the iterators that process temp tables. It's just those things. I've also got some variables in here to sort of keep stuff organized, but they that's all they do is keep stuff organized. All the work is done with just these three things right here. So even this big complex formula can just be broken down to the three. And the nice thing about these elements is they interact in very predictable ways, right? So this diagram down here shows how they interact. Now, uh, at the end of the class, this diagram will make a whole lot more sense. My job, my goal right now is not to have you look at this thing and nod your head and say, oh, I get it. What I want you to do is look at this thing and say, it's not that complex. I don't understand it yet, but there's not that many working parts. There's one, two, three elements, and there seems to be one, two, three, four, five different kinds of interactions. I could learn that. Give me some time and I can learn it. And that's what I want you to understand. You can write DAX. Even if you're not a professional developer, if you can work with Excel, you can write DAX. Okay. So uh, frequently asked questions, and I just gave one of them away, but uh, we'll, we'll go through these, right? Uh, first question, are there other elements beyond the three? Yes, yes, there are. Uh, but deeply learning these three in isolation is the correct way to start. Uh, some of the other elements are so easy that they aren't really worth pointing out. Uh, things like basic math and variables, we don't want to focus on those. And there's other elements that are really only useful after you've learned the first three. Things like synthetic tables and parameters. I don't want to say that they're not helpful, but until you know those first three backwards and forwards, they're not really going to be useful for you. Okay, so we're going to focus on the three. Question number two, I don't have a programming background. Is this video series okay for me? Well, if you didn't hear me telling you that it was uh, five seconds ago, I'm going to tell you again. Yes, it's just fine for you. I don't have a programming background and I wrote this thing. The target audience for this series is semi-technical people. So if you are comfortable working with Excel formulas or pivot tables, or you can write some basic SQL, you should be just fine with this series. And either one of those alone is fine. You don't have to be able to do both. Okay, lastly, uh, how accurate is this? Are, are these terms that you're using new? I haven't heard these before. Yeah, many of the terms are indeed new. The idea here behind this mental framework is that we're going to introduce uh, new terms and new ideas that hopefully are going to make understanding and hence writing DAX easier. There are a small number of simplifications that we've made, but in general, we've worked really hard to keep things uh, super duper accurate. And what we've really tried to do is set you up well so that when you have to transition eventually to the uh, very most nuanced form of understanding, it'll be pretty easy to do. And that's it. That's it for the introduction. Enough chit chat, enough talk about this stuff. Let's go ahead and get started learning DAX, shall we?